It's not an original living, we hold this now, but um, anyway, so, uh, and I did taxes here one year with Kathy, so. Uh, anyway, the circuit breaker is a benefit from the state of Massachusetts, and it's available to people who are 65 and over. And if you've got a couple and one is younger than 65, the couple is still eligible. Uh, only one has to be 65 or over. And the benefit is up to $1,070, which is the same as it was last year. It was level funded for from the two years. And what it is, is uh, if your property tax exceeds 10% of your income, they give you the difference up to $1,070. But it has to be your primary home on which you pay property tax. So uh, I've got some examples on here. If uh, if you're single, right, your income cannot exceed fifty-seven thousand. If you're married filing jointly, it cannot exceed eighty-six thousand. If you're head of household, seventy-one thousand. Uh, chances are you're not going to get a tax uh, circuit breaker anyways if your income is that much. Because again, I don't know what the typical tax bill here, probably 3500 4000 in that range. Right. So if your income is 30000 then you take 10% of your income is 3000 you subtract that from your property tax, and you get the difference up to $1,070. Do you want me to put an example on the board? Or is that clear? They also allow you to uh, take uh, gift storage now. You do. Some places. Okay. Well, they, they allow you to take one half of your water bill and one half of your storage bill in addition to your property tax. So, let me just stick an example up there. And this income, it's all income, whether it's taxable or not, is included. Because even if you have just Social Security, um, Social Security, if that's all your income is, it's not going to be taxed. But let's say you have a husband and wife whose combined Social Security is 30000 which is kind of high. But, and if their property tax is 3500 sorry about my tongue and shirt, 3500 and half of their water and sewerage is 200 for example, then the total property tax and half of the water and sewerage would be $3,700. You take 10% of your income of $30,000 would be $3,000. And that person would get back $700 as a circuit breaker. Right? Um, if you're a renter, they only allow 25% of the rent. If, if you're not if you're not paying property taxes, but you're paying rent like in a mobile home park, right? 25% of your rent, an example of that, the rent in a mobile home park is typically in the four to $500 range. Let's use 500 as an example. And 500 a month, that would be 6,000 in a year. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, 6,000 in a year. And for renters, they only allow 25% of that. 25% of that is to considered to be attributed towards paying property taxes to the town by the whoever owns the property, even if it's jointly owned by the tenants. So then, if you took 25% of that, that would be 1500 And then if you look at their income, if their income is $20,000, they are not going to get a circuit breaker. Because 20000 10% of 20000 is 2000 And 25% of their rent is not more than 10% of their income. So they would not qualify. Yeah, uh, uh, sewage, water, uh, yeah, water and sewage is included in on the rent. And that's that you can't break out separately if it's included in on the rent. They just have to take the 25%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, right. so, if you have your home in a trust, if it's an irrevocable trust, then you are considered a tenant for the purposes of the circuit breaker. 
even if you pay the property taxes, the homeowner's insurance and everything, but you have to take that total, then take 25% of that and subtract it from your income. If it's a revocable trust and you're a trustee on the account, then you can claim the property tax because you still effectively own the property. Any question on that? It's a fairly simple program and it's, uh, you know, anybody have an example that they'd like to discuss? Are you clear on what the circuit breaker covers? I guess I did pretty good in a shot. Right? <laughs> 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 okay. I'm sorry? I just want to apply. You have to do your property, or your, your income taxes. You have to do your state income tax. There's a, a Schedule CB, Circuit Breaker, which uh, is part of the tax return. Um, it's fairly straightforward, but some people, when they fill it out on their own, they might not uh, include some income, like Social Security. If you take money out of a 401k, that becomes income. Uh, if you have a pension in addition to Social Security, it's all income. And it's all income before taxes. If you have any withheld, you gotta put that back in. Right? When you look at Social Security, you've gotta look at all the Social Security, including the Part B premium that you're paying. Okay. So it, it's your, your gross income, not the adjusted? That's correct. Yeah. And it's 10% of your gross income is what they look at for uh, what your income is to determine what your refund might be. Yeah, I know, because I, I looked at that. I'm, I, I'm 66, so, but okay. I turned 65 in the middle of last year, so when I, I know I when I did my taxes last, you know, in January, I looked at that, but I didn't qualify. No, because you didn't turn 65 until 2016, right? No, 2015, but it was like then you oh, halfway qualified. through the year, it but doesn't I didn't matter. have... It's December 31st. If you turn yeah. 65 by December 31st, then you can claim it for that year, yeah, even but, if you turn 65 but, on the but last the day. the figures didn't add up, you know? Oh, okay, you know, to give you a refund. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But you have to be 65 as of December 31st any time from the 1st of January to December 31st. And again, only one of the couple, if it's a husband and wife, has to be that age. If you've got a brother and sister or two brothers that own a house and uh, the property taxes are paid by one of the brothers, if he's actually paying the taxes, he can claim the deduction. If he happens to have the lower income, chances are they'll get uh, a better refund. Okay, I'm at a loss for words now. Unless <laughs> this question. So, so yes. This one eight got can we prorate the taxes ah, back I'm to sorry. one eight? Thank you, thank you. Um, the circuit breaker allows only one acre. Uh, in my case, I live in Rehoboth. The minimum acre size in the town is an acre and a half. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this shouldn't be recorded, but <laughs> my, my lot is uh, 1.09 acres. I wouldn't try to pass that out. I'd just put the total amount in. Okay. Um, somebody, because it's a one and a half acre, I, I typically do it with a one and a half acre minimum lot size in Rehoboth. But if you live in Rainham, what's your minimum lot here? Is it three quarters or something? No. Well, whatever. If you have two acres, then we'd look at, usually with your property tax bill, they give a, a, um, a tax for the residence and a tax for the property. And if it's two acres, we just take half of the property tax. If you've got 10 acres, we take 10% of the property tax. <coughs> Plus the value of the home, the assessed value of the home. The assessed value of the home cannot exceed $720,000. Okay. I don't have that problem. <laughs> um, any other questions? That's all I got. <laughs> okay. It is fairly simple, fairly straightforward. If you're not comfortable with doing a circuit breaker, you can 
they do taxes here. There's two people who come here and they do taxes for free, mm -hmm. and they'll do the circuit breaker for you. Uh, typically, they will do a they will do a federal return even if you don't have to file, because the software requires that we do a federal, and then everything follows suit in the state, and and we can e-file. There's no cost for any of that. But so. does it e account to any account? Would they know about. Yeah, they should, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but you know about it, and you want to make sure. Last year? Uh, mine either. I'm sorry? Nobody said anything last year. Yeah. I, I didn't come here. I went. Somebody that I always went to, and, and he's never said right. anything. Right, and you were living in, you were living in Massachusetts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Same well, well you, you can amend last year's return, and that person and should amend it for you. I'm not doing it by accident. You know, like trying to redo the you can go back three years, right? And so if you, last year the, uh, the refund was 1,070, the year before it was 1,040, the year before it was 1,020. Up until April 15th, you can do the current year and prior three years. If you, if you amend a return after April 13th, you can only do the last three years, uh, 13, 14, uh, 15, 16, 13, 14, 15, 16. And I, we've done that for people, but I'm afraid this year is going to be tough. We've got new software, and we don't have a look back. We can't, we can't look back. We can look back on federal, but we have to populate everything in there. We don't have software for the prior year of state with the software that we're using. But next year, we'll be able to go back one year. The year after that, we'll have it for two. So, yes? Do we, um, if we decided to do it, uh, taxes here. Do we bring our papers in from last year? Bring your, your prior year's tax return with you. Okay. Bring all of your income statements. Uh -huh. Bring your 1099, or yes, I say 1099, your social security statement, any pensions, any uh, IRA withdrawals, you get a 1099-R. If you have a canceled debt, you know, that's a 1099-C and that's taxable. If you have a credit card debt that's canceled, uh -huh. the IRS looks at that as income for you. So, the people but that, that would be reported. The people that are here are doing this. Uh, they're Very familiar with that. Yeah, they're not CPAs, but they've been well trained. Okay. Um, Kathy was a state auditor. Okay. Uh, George was a captain in the fire department in Brockton, you know, but but he's been doing it now, I think, four years. So um, the software does most of it, but we okay. learn to recognize what should be where. And if there's so. any problem, do they come back to you guys or? What? If there's a, they can handle it. Okay. You know, I do it myself mm -hmm. in other locations. Um, if there's a reject for whatever reason, then uh -huh. we'll, we'll get back to you. Uh, if you find later that you found a statement that you forgot to bring with you, yeah. they can do an amended return, but the appointments fill up pretty quickly here for getting your taxes done. And uh, they may not be able to fit you in before the end of the season. Of course, an amended return can be done even after April 15th. Okay. So, so we have to bring our sewer and our water bills. You want to bring your, your property taxes. Yeah. And the property taxes, there's four quarters that you pay property taxes right. on. Mm -hmm. And those four, four quarters usually go between two different years. Right? Mm -hmm. it's just, it's the, the first two quarters are the August and October yeah. right, mm -hmm. of uh, 16. And, I'm sorry, uh, 15, and then the, uh, the next two quarters will be January and March, or January and April of 16. It's the fiscal year for the town goes from July 1st to June 30th, so, and the tax year is a calendar year, January to December. So. One thing that some people do is they get a circuit breaker every other year. If they come close to qualifying, what counts is what you paid for your taxes in that given year. If you know what your taxes are going to be for the first and second quarter of next year, and you pay them before December 31st, then you've got one and a half times your taxes, if you will. That's going to bring up the total tax and uh, could give you a larger refund. And you also said on the, um, the Social Security Act, there's what we get, but they take out for Part B, 
that. They look at the total amount. The total amount. You can get an award letter that tells you what your total is for the year, right. and then they deduct the um, whatever you oh, pay, okay. 104, 90, 120, okay. 180, whatever. Yeah, but they look at the gross. And I do suggest that you use the guys here. Uh, rather than, I wouldn't try to go through the form on your own. You could, if you do your taxes anyway. Well, we'll see what TurboTax does, because TurboTax Turbo tax will have it. Because that's right. what we've been doing for a decade, so it has everything. And it's did easy you turn, to do. when did you turn 65? We're going to tell everybody here now. So. 15. I'm sorry, in, in 15? 15. So you could do, you could amend last year's return. Except in the work turbo. last year, so that's not going to work. Because your income is going to be greater. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I brought a copy of the state reg. I only have, I was going to leave one with Elizabeth, and I kept one for myself. I could read through it since we got some time and we'll see if there's anything that would apply to you that I've overlooked. General rules, the real estate taxes must be paid during the tax year that you're doing the return for. Right? Or the rent has to be paid during that tax year. The next one is refundable credit. If the credit exceeds the amount of total income tax due for the year, the excess amount of the credit will be refunded to the taxpayer without interest. If the credit exceeds the amount of taxable income, yes, the excess amount of the credit will be refunded. Refundable credit. It is a refundable credit, but the, the excess is up to 1070 but they don't pay any interest on it. So basically. And maximum credit for the year, this was written for 2014. At that time it was 1,050. Now it's 1,070. Taxpayer or spouse of mining, married filing jointly must be 65 years of age or older at the end of the taxable year. If you're filing married filing separately, you're not allowed to take the credit. It has to be a married filing jointly or single. Right? Let's see. Taxpayer must own, own or rent the property, and it must be your principal residence. And you can only use one property on this. If you've got a cottage on the Cape and a house here, you can't combine the two together. The other one's not your principal residence. Uh, <coughs> these are updated number, what I said earlier, and I have on that page about uh, the maximum income. And at that time, the house couldn't be worth more than 691000 Now that's 720 And no credit for married filing separate, which I told you. If, you. if you're receiving a federal or state rent, rent subsidy, if you're living in elderly housing and you get a subsidy on that, you cannot get the circuit breaker. Because right? the, the town or the state is already contributing to that. Uh, and you cannot be the dependent of another taxpayer. Okay? You can't be somebody else's dependent. If you're living with a child who's, who provides more than half your support, but you own the home, they claim you as a dependent, you can't get the circuit breaker. Let's see. And the Schedule CB, which I mentioned, is for calculating it. Um, and the calculation is just what I told you. Total income plus all other income excluded from Massachusetts gross income, like Social Security that Massachusetts doesn't tax. All of your income combined. Less the personal, oh, no, nope. Less interest and penalty, penalty charges. They don't let you include the delinquent payments and then 50% of the water and sewer. And it also includes betterments. So if you've had a new sewer line put in on your street, you know, being charged extra on that, you can include that in your property tax. Uh, and the taxes have to be paid in the year that you're actually filing for. Uh, if you've got an abatement on your taxes for doing work at the town hall or at the senior center, 
you cannot take credit for that uh, abatement. So you're getting $500 off on your taxes. We can't include that when reporting the property tax. <coughs> and any exemptions you get for uh, a reduction in property tax due to income, age and income, you, you can only claim them off the charge you pay. And that's pretty much it. There's also something called, if you own your home and you have to put in a new septic system, there is, that's an SC, septic credit form. And that allows you to deduct what you're spent on a septic system, but that's a separate line item on your tax return. It's not included on the circuit breaker. Let's see. And the cost to pump a septic tank can't be, cannot be included. It's not part of the town's costs that are being given. That's just a user fee. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. And rent, it's only the 25% of the rent. Much of this I covered total income. Massachusetts gross income is included in the total income. Federal gross income excluded from mass gross income by a specific law is that added back into the total, like Social Security that Massachusetts does not tax. Um, let's see. In, any gains on bonds, stocks or bonds, that's income, any uh, bank interest. Cash public assistance, if you get food stamps, you, that has to be added back in on your income. However, if you get fuel assistance and that money never goes in your hand, it goes directly to the oil company for fuel assistance, you don't have to consider that. But if you get the money in hand and then pay them, that's considered income to you. You can make a decision on what you're going to do with that money. So. What if the property is in trust? If, the prop, if it's in a revocable trust, and the revocable trust is in your name, you can claim the property, the property tax. If it is an irrevocable trust that you cannot, then the property tax is considered rent. But you could also include other fees that you pay on the house, not user fees like electric and, and heating oil, but if you're paying for the, uh, the insurance for the property, right, you know, and it's owned by the trust, you're not getting any benefit of that. The trust is, so that becomes part of the rent, that and the property tax. Let's see. Disability income is included, food stamps, gains from sale of personal residence under the $250,000, $500,000. If you sold your home and you had a gain on the sale, you can write off a gain of $250,000 for each of the spouses, so up to $500,000. If you're issued a 1099-S, which is a sale of, uh, sale of home uh, form from, from the bank or whoever, uh, then you have to include it on your tax return, otherwise you do not. But you still, if you get a gain, you've got to show that on the property, on the circuit breaker form. Let's see. Return of capital. If you get uh, a return of, of investment on something, that's not income. That's money you invested and you're just getting your money back. So that's not income. So return on investment is not. And sick pay is included. Social Security. Uh, any welfare, workers' compensation, all of that is included. Okay. Uh, pretty much it. Just yes. One more. Okay. If, we, if we do, we, I know we can do the taxes here, and it's free. Yep. But if we went, uh, I've been going to the same accountant for years. Yep. If, uh, yep. I went, if I went to them and I said, how come you never told me about a cir circuit breaker tax? Can we do it now when it goes back? Chances are he's going to tell you that I did it, and when he shows you last year's return, yeah. you're going to see that he did it. Right? He may not have described it to you, he but I'd be surprised did. if they didn't. It, well, right, but it doesn't mean that he didn't do it. Oh, okay. Right? So you can look at your, um, 
your tax return, yeah. your state tax return, uh -huh. page three, you'll see a circuit breaker credit. Okay. And you can look for that there. If there's nothing there and you feel there should have been, then you should talk to them. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Anything else? Okay. Thank you for coming.